It's not like any other podcast. Coming to you straight from the heartland, where investing is told like it is. It's time for Darren Garman's Paranoid Banker Podcast. Hold on, because here comes the next episode of the Paranoid Banker Podcast. Well, hey there, Darren Garman here, and welcome to the podcast this week. We are going to talk about the Yugo. Um... The Yugo, and uh, I don't know about you, but I remember when the Yugo came out, and <clears throat> it was kind of a joke, really. Um, in, in as much as I remember, and I, I don't think I was was I driving then. I mean, it was that long ago. I mean, I, I'm pretty sure I was old enough to drive. I think I was a teenager. Um, and I have to check the dates on when it came out. Uh, but I remember, uh, even when I was much, much younger, how much of a joke the car was because of all the problems it had. Um, very, very cheap car for the time. Um, but uh, I remember it. Um, you know, the running joke was you didn't want to own one or buy one because it would you know, pretty much fall apart the first month or two months you had it. And that was being generous. And, uh, uh, of course, you know, as of today, you don't even see them on the road. You don't even see, a. I mean, I haven't seen a Yugo for well, probably 10, 15 years or so, uh, at least on the road. And so the story I'm going to tell you is about the Yugo. And this podcast is really going to be a story with some commentary about the Yugo. And it has to do with you your investments and your investing uh, if you are invested in the right place um, and probably a couple of other things too. Uh, So yeah, all wrapped up into this week's podcast and it's about the Yugo. So uh, this is a story that uh, it's not my story. It's a story that was told to me and um uh, and here, here it goes. So, in Russia, there was a young man that really wanted to own a car. And, of course, in a socialist country, it's very hard to do, uh, very, very hard to do to own your own car. Um, I mean, if you want to look at how bad that is today, just take a look at what's going on in Venezuela right now. Uh, but... Uh, uh, but anyway, so this young man worked uh, for you no know, roughly five years, uh, three jobs. Um, you know, lived on a cot, ate a bowl of soup a day. Uh, didn't spend any money at all. So he barely survived in order to get a car. Uh, he wanted a car that bad. So wanted to be able to drive to visit um, his parents, drive to visit some other relatives, and of course, you know, use a car, right? And all the conveniences a car has. So uh, this young man for, uh, that was actually over five years, basically worked three jobs, you know, slept three to four hours a day, um, lived in really, really poor, poor, um, uh, lived in a poor environment, in order to save and scratch and scrap in order to be able to buy the car. And the only car he was going to be able to afford to buy to get to that point where point where he could own a car was a Yugo. Um, so he um, finally, after a little bit over five years, has enough I don't know, is it rubles? Is that the currency? I, I think that's what it is. He has enough money where he can now buy a car. Um, so the first thing he has to do in Russia in order to buy a car is he has to meet with somebody from the government and basically get permission to buy a car because they want to know uh, why do you need a car? So he has two or three meetings with people and uh, justifies the reasons he would like to have a car. So 
he, um, after these meetings, which, you know, probably took a couple of months to go through, he's finally been given the permission to be able to buy a car. Uh, then he has to have another meeting with uh, somebody else, with the government, uh, regarding the money. So this meeting is about where did you get the money, how did you get the money, uh, to make sure that he got the money through um, the proper means under that system of government in order to get the car. Um, so he went through that meeting and um, was told a couple of weeks later that, you know, he passed whatever litmus test they've got to make sure that he got the money in what they would consider the right way. So now he has one more meeting where he's going to meet with somebody and they're going to actually buy the car. And so a few months later, that meeting happens. And, you know, it's not like us where we go to let's just say a car dealership or order a car online uh, or buy a car online. I mean, this is basically, you know, the car's ready to go, right? The car is ready to be bought. You just go there and meet with somebody, uh, you give them the money, and then that's it pretty much, right? And so um, goes to the meeting, sits down with the person. They go over all of whatever necessary documents they need to do. This young man hands over um, uh, his money, and papers are signed, and the gentleman says, you've got yourself a car. So, of course, the young man asks the question, well, when will I be getting the car? Um, the gentleman behind the desk you know, kind of looks over some more paperwork and says, Oh, probably, uh, probably in about 10 years. Uh, now you're on the list to get the car and the availability of the car uh, based on how many more people are in front of you to get a car, um, a Yugo, that is, is about 10 years. And so uh, the young man says, well, do you have an exact date? on when that would be. And so the man looks through the paperwork and he says, well, as a matter of fact, I do. You need to come back in here. And he gave the young man a date. And of course, the, um, the gentleman sitting behind the desk was a little agitated because he's thinking, well, I mean, it's 10 years. Why do you need an exact date? We'll get in touch with you. But he gave him a date. Um, and so then the young man asks, what time do you think that would be? And so the guy sitting behind the desk basically says, what, why do you need to know the time? I mean, we're, you just come here this day um, and we'll go ahead and see about you getting the car. So why, why would you need to know the time? Um, and the young man said, well, the plumber's coming over that day. So hopefully you got that. And, uh, you know, even though that um, story does have some truth in it, um, some bend in it, uh, this is pretty much what um, would go on in a country that is not a capitalist country or has capitalism as their driver of their economy and of their way of life. Okay. So uh, why, why am I, why am I going down this road on this podcast? And why am I, why am I taking the time to do this? Because you are going to now with the elections starting to already percolate a little bit for 2020, you're going to hear one word a lot. Uh, and that word is free. Okay. That word is free. So, there will be various candidates, mostly those candidates on the left, 
uh, uh, some on the extreme left that will be touting the virtues of free, um, especially things like free college, um, and there'll be other things, free health care, and there'll be other things that will be thrown around, and um, and you'll hear that four-letter word free a lot. And uh, uh, it, 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 right now, we are seeing probably more than we've seen in the past, I'd say 10 to 20 years, the push for being really modeling a lot of the same socialistic um, processes, um, socialistic ways of life. Uh, I think we've seen anything like it for uh, probably 20 years or longer. Uh, and it, it, it's kind of making a comeback. Uh, and it skews very much, not surprisingly, towards our younger folks. Um, you know, for a lot of our younger folks, you know, they think this all sounds terrific. Uh, and they have really no idea how important a system of capitalism is for not only our economy, but for our way of life. And, you know, this could be a podcast about debating all of the merits of capitalism. And, and look, capitalism's not perfect. Uh, I didn't say it was. I mean, there are some things about it that um, can sting once in a while. But it is the best way for any country to operate. We have seen now, and we have seen historically, that the socialistic way of operating does not work. Um, it's been proven it doesn't work. Uh, we see it historically. We see it now. And uh, you and I will be seeing a lot of Vote for me, I'll give you a bunch of free shit. And it's coming in a big way. Uh, so what what can you and I do about this? Uh, well, first of all, number one, if you are um, in the socialistic type camp and listening to this, uh, you may as well just stop listening. <laughs> I mean... Um, okay, so, uh, and, and frankly, if you are and, and have upset you and pissed you off and you're um, offended, uh, frankly, I don't care. And, uh, you know, feel free to unsubscribe and do whatever you think you need to do. Uh, so that's number one. Number two, um, you need to have some conversations with people around you about this. And, you know, I'm not saying get yourself in a heated political discussion with, you know, and, and, and all of a sudden you've got problems all around you, but it deserves comment, it deserves attention, and it deserves your um, time in course correcting this. Because if most of us sit on our hands and just think to ourselves that this is interesting but absolutely ridiculous it will gain traction and you will see things happen that will at the end of the day affect your investments affect your income and affect the time effort and energy you have spent in creating your financial and social world okay um, which is the main reason I'm having this podcast and talking about this because we will see it, you will hear about it, and for many it will sound very good. So let me just give you another quick example about this. So I was talking to uh, my a friend of my son's. My son is a college freshman, and this friend of his is a college sophomore at the University of Iowa. And um, we were talking about the cold weather and how what a bad winter it was. And um, I asked him, 
you know, if he's been kind of, you know, how, how he gets to class and is he outside a lot. And, and he was telling me that, uh, you know, he gets cold, but it didn't, um, uh, it didn't compare to the cold and waiting outside in line for tickets for over two hours in, um, in below zero weather, uh, about three or four, about a little over about four years ago, when uh, one of the presidential candidates at that time uh, came to town and was speaking to the students at the university. Uh, that presidential candidate is Bernie Sanders. So he stood in line for two hours with a bunch of other college kids to listen to Bernie Sanders while getting frostbite. Why? Because the message that is given by Mr. Sanders is one that is attractive to them. And so, um, so look, you know, this coming election, and I don't care if you're Democrat, Republican, it doesn't matter to me, but what does matter to me and what should matter to you, especially when it comes to uh, the things that we talk about most of the time, <clears throat> is this gaining ground of having everything for free because that means that they'll take money, uh, investment income, uh, etc., and redistribute it, right? Um, redistribute it uh, from you and um, go other places that they they feel it needs to go. <clears throat> That's not good for anybody. So as you go through your weekend, go through your week next week, and as you now start to see more, hear more, and, and maybe you're really involved in the political process, I don't know. As you start to be involved in more of this, um, keep my Yugo story in mind. By the way, it was a story that I believe Reagan told in in some form, you know, years ago. And, um, and so <clears throat> that's pretty much where I got it. And a friend of mine and I were talking about this story the other day. And so I wanted to share it with you. But um, that Yugo story, just kind of keep that in the back of your mind. And even though it sounds ridiculous, it's not, really. It's not. And that's no way that any of us want to live. And it's sure no way that we would want any uh, kids or grandkids to live that way. And, uh, and, and as you start hearing this free word more and more and more between now and November of next year, uh, keep my Yugo story in mind. Okay? All right. Have a great day. Have a great weekend. Have a great rest of the week. We will talk to you later. See ya. Bye-bye. Thanks for joining Darren Garman's Paranoid Banker Podcast. For investment questions, comments, or to get in touch with Darren, go to www.garmanblog.com. Thanks for joining Darren Garman's Paranoid Banker Podcast. For investment questions, comments, or to get in touch with Darren, go to www.garmanblog.com.